the issues of pastors preaching based on limited experience, navigating complex issues, and not having much counseling experience makes us divorcees look elsewhere for help. Maybe to a kind friend, support groups, books, podcasts, someone who can relate with our needs and our experiences and our feelings. Our church small groups aren't always the answer either. We discussed in the past few episodes ago that those groups are not full of people qualified to navigate divorce decisions. And I'll even double down. Since their depth of knowledge is closely aligned normally with their pastor's depth, well, they're not going to be much better at navigating post-divorce than the pastor is. Although, obviously, they can certainly be welcoming and loving toward the crust soul in a whirlwind that divorcees are sometimes in, for sure. But when they jump in with dating advice, attempts to reconcile, constant invites to church events, etc., it can become draining on those of us dealing with far bigger issues than church stuff. Statistics show that children are deeply affected by divorce. Don't believe the nonsense about kids being resilient. While we're going through unyoking, we are navigating some real issues of kids' mental health, power struggles with the ex and boundary issues, co-parenting, lifestyle changing, possibly money issues. These are just broad stroke overviews of the issues we navigate. Do you think that somehow volunteering at church or making an easy casserole for the small group or coming and blowing up balloons for vacation Bible school or name your other church volunteer needs is somehow a better use of our time than dealing with a crisis in our lives? A divorce is not just a decision and negotiating a settlement and moving out and getting on with our lives. The American church machine with all its demands on volunteering and attending is not a priority of people going through some real shit in their lives. It shines a light on the church's problem. And for those of us in a crisis, I mean, once again, imagine being a victim at a natural disaster and you're needing some real help, a place to sleep, food, water, maybe clothes, a ride to school the following week for your children, maybe even your utilities turned back on, or even the money to do so. And the Red Cross comes to you and asks you not just to volunteer, but can you, know, maybe can you do a donation drive so we can all wear red shirts? Or let's make sure this van looks great when we roll up on our next disaster. You would roll your eyes and discuss. Well, that's what we do as churches when we ask people in crisis to feed the busy church machine while they're in a crisis. It's just comical. Remember, pastors, your version of church, that big building, those programs, the worship band and the six-figure sound system, the light show, your youth camps, your Christmas plays, is not necessarily God's version of love your neighbor and feed the widows and the orphans. This is another rabbit trail, and I won't go down it too much, but it just affects how you minister to divorcees. The assumption that conversions to Christianity happens in a church has caused many American churches to cater to the show and to their offerings to the attendees and those believers and members that are hurting and that are in need are often the ones who pay the price. Okay, let's get into some details of what happens, not on stage, but in the hallways, the advice that trickles our way from Christians or church staff. Date Jesus. Okay, I get it. It's a vague phrase. I think it's meant to imply Jesus is always the answer. When you're in need, Jesus is always there for you. Okay, I got it. It's also used to imply, instead of missing your spouse or spending time, you know, suffering, why don't you just spend time in the Word and deepen your relationship with Christ? It will be good for you. Well, here's the problem with this vague, superficial advice. It's just that. Vague, superficial advice. Like when you're out of a job and your lights are about to be turned off and your car is days from repo, hey, you should start your own business. We're lonely, crushed, sometimes depressed, navigating a whirlwind of issues. And you want to suggest something vague and not addressing our current need and situations. 
If you like this content, then subscribe for even more resources, fun, laughter, and sound advice for Christians adventuring in unyoked living. Not just divorce recovery, but for brave men and women who are growing and going and living a life on mission. Blessings.